Okay, welcome to the light dependent reactions. If you have a sheet of paper to hand, I recommend drawing along with me. You can pause the video uh, at any moment so that you can uh, so that you can uh, stop and draw whatever I've just drawn. Um, just up in the corner here, I'll just show you where we're at. We're inside a chloroplast. Remember, chloroplasts have got two membranes, and they have these stacks inside them. A stack is called a um, granum. And it's made up of many thylakoids. So we're just going to look at one thylakoid. And the thylakoids are the site of the light dependent reactions, also known as the light reactions. You might see that in an exam. Uh, so I'm going to just draw the uh, membrane of the thylakoid. There are numerous specialized protein complexes in the membrane. So I'm just going to draw those in first. Some of these are, act as proton pumps and others are just carrier molecules. So I've drawn a few of the proteins that are going to be in my membrane and let's just draw the phospholipid bilayer, just very sketch it out to show that these are situated in that. Now of course the thylakoid is a big um, bubble type shape so I need to draw the membrane at the lower half too and along with that and the membrane in the lower half I'm going to draw that very special protein complex ATP synthase. So there's my ATP synthase. It has a channel through the middle for the hydrogen ions to move through. So I'll just finish off drawing my membrane. Uh, not a particularly great drawing of a thylakoid, but it'll do. And I need one more protein complex up on the surface here that I didn't draw before. So uh, what happens in the light dependent reactions? Well, we've got two photosystems, this one here and this one here. These are complexes made up of multiple chlorophyll molecules. And the first one, rather bizarrely, is called photosystem two. So I've just written a PS2 there. And then we have photosystem one. Uh, if I remember correctly, the reason for this is photosystem one was discovered first and then photosystem two. Um, so that's why they're named in that order. But photosystem 2 is where things start out. The very first thing that happens is a photon of light uh, strikes a chlorophyll molecule in the membrane. Let's write that in, photon. And excites an electron. So an electron, which I've just drawn here, is excited, it gains energy. If we're going to plot this out to show the energy, I'm just going to do a little graph over here of the electron over time. When that uh, chlorophyll molecule is struck by a photon of light, that energy, um, first is vibrational energy, is then passed on to the electron, so the energy goes up. That causes the electron to move down the electron transport chain. So it'll move between these protein complexes all the way along here, all the way to photosystem number one. In fact, this happens with two different electrons. So I'm just gonna put a two there. Two photons of light exciting the electrons and they get passed between the protein complexes. As they move between the protein complexes, they lose energy. So on my graph here, I'm just going to show that that energy is lost. I'm just going to do, um, we've got time along the bottom. And we've got energy of electrons. So energy is being lost as they move down the um, electron transport chain. Now uh, to 
uh, the point of this, the reason for this is as they lose energy, they actually use some of their energy to pump hydrogen ions across the membrane. So some of these protein complexes will pump hydrogen ions across the membrane. Now it may not exactly be these particular ones, but the principle is hydrogen ions moving across the membrane. So they're losing energy, the electrons are losing energy, and as they do so, that energy is being used to pump hydrogen ions, and this is actually against a concentration gradient, so this is a form of active transport. So this contributes to a high concentration of hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid. So we can assume then that there's also going to be a low pH inside the thylakoid. Now these electrons have obviously moved all the way over here, they're going to need to be replaced. So the electrons, that they, uh, the way the electrons are replaced is through the splitting of water. Uh, water molecules, H2O, are split into molecular oxygen, O2. Obviously we need two water molecules to enable this to happen. I'm not going to balance it here, but you can work that out. Hydrogen ions and electrons. So this is where the electrons are coming from. They're coming from water. This produces oxygen. Hydrogen ions, which again are going to build up the concentration of hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid, and oxygen. And the oxygen can diffuse out of the thylakoid. Remember, it's a small nonpolar molecule, so it can diffuse out and it might go to a mitochondria to respire or it might leave the plant um, which is very useful for us obviously because then we can breathe it in and use it in our respiration in our mitochondria. So that's where the oxygen is coming from and uh, remember if we're balancing our equation out we know that six of these will be produced for every one molecule of glucose. So the splitting of water has a special name. It is called photolysis. Remember that photo means light and lysis means split. We've already come across that um, before in uh, the term uh, hydrolysis. So photolysis uh, taking place there. That's what that process is called. So all of this is building up a high concentration of hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid. And they're going to want to move out of this space from a high to a low concentration. And there is a significantly lower concentration of hydrogen ions outside of the thylakoid in this space that we call the stroma. Remember, the stroma is like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. So the hydrogen ions diffuse through this particular molecule, this very special molecule, ATP synthase. And the clue is in the name. It makes ATP synthesis. ATP synthesis is done by the enzyme ATP synthase. It is converting ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and a phosphate ion into ATP. I've noticed a few students make a mistake here. They say that the hydrogen ions join to the ADP. Uh, that's not actually correct. They just move out. This process is driven by the spinning of the ATP synthase. Okay, so the ATP is going to go off to the Calvin cycle. Oops, there we go. But there's one other thing that the Calvin cycle needs from the light-dependent reactions, and that happens all the way back over next to photosystem one. At photosystem one, if you remember, we have our electrons that are moved all the way over here. They move down that um, electron transport chain. At photosystem one, the electrons are excited once again by another photon of light. Okay. So the electrons again increase in energy, so I'm going to go back to my graph in the corner. There we go. And show them increasing in energy once more. 
and they'll lose a little bit of energy as they take place as the next step takes place. And that is uh, the electrons move to this particular little enzyme on the surface here. And this enzyme is going to donate the electrons to uh, a molecule called NAD+. This is a high energy electron carrier. It's going to pick up these electrons that have got a lot of energy and take them to the Calvin cycle. It also picks up at the same time hydrogen and a, a hydrogen ion. This actually helps to increase the difference in concentration across the membrane of hydrogen ions because if we're taking them away from the outside then obviously there's going to be a big difference between the inside and the outside. So there were three things that were increasing the hydrogen uh, con ion concentration gradient. One is the removal of hydrogen right here. One is the pumping of hydrogen into the thylakoid. And one is photolysis, which is obviously producing hydrogen ions here. The ATP oh, this gradient that is created then enables the ATP synthase to work. The ATP synthase is enabling the hydrogen ions to move down that concentration gradient. It itself, though, is not maintaining the concentration gradient. So, what does this form? NAD plus and a hydrogen H plus plus two electrons forms a molecule called NADH. And this molecule is very important also in the Calvin cycle. So I'm going to draw an arrow along here. It goes, oops, that was an interesting arrow. It goes off the page and you'll have to watch another video to see what happens in the Calvin cycle. So important takeaways. Photolysis, the splitting of water, happens after Photosystem 2 has excited electrons. The electrons from photolysis are to replace those that have been excited. The electrons lose energy as they move down an electron transport chain, causing hydrogen ions to move into the thylakoid lumen. This is, uh, that's just another name. The lumen is another name for the space inside the thylakoid. At photosystem 1, the electrons are excited again by another photon of light. They are passed on to an enzyme which binds them with NAD plus and H plus, forming NADH. It is really critical that you know that NADH is produced here and ATP is produced here by the ATP synthase as a result of hydrogen ions moving down their concentration gradient. Remember as well, molecular oxygen is produced and released, which is very useful for us. If you are ever wondering, per molecule of glucose made then, in order for this all to balance, this should be six water molecules forming six oxygen. And of course, in order to um, enable all of this to happen, we need a supply of NADP which is coming either from the cell or back from the Calvin cycle. And we need a constant supply of NAD+, which is coming from the Calvin cycle. So I'm just going to write down the side in case you're confused, Calvin cycle. Don't get that confused with the Krebs cycle, which of course is in respiration. Cool. I hope you, that was informative. Now have a go at answering some of those exam questions that you struggled on before.